Good morning. Good morning from Melbourne, Australia. Good evening to friends in North America and hello to anyone watching on replay. My name is Nancy Hepker and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Melbourne, Australia. Just checking my external mic here, see if it seems to be working. Uh, please uh, say hello in the comments if you have joined me. And uh, let me know if for some reason you're not hearing me. I'm not 100% convinced about this microphone. Though some people say it helps the sound. Okay, let's get started. Um, today I am casing a card that I saw in a Facebook group uh, that someone had made, um, but there were no instructions with it, no, no descriptors, so I'm um, I'm doing my own version and coming up with it the best I can. Um, she had a monochrome, she had a white background piece that um, she appeared to have used one of the decorative masks to make. Um, and hello Gladys, um, can you let me know that you can hear me? Um, and I have some of the decorative masks. I don't have the most recent set of them, but that's okay. Um, a lot of this is going to be, a lot today is using retired stuff. Um, so I picked out two that I thought would work particularly well. And I did give it a little bit of a test run last night. Excellent. Glad you can hear me, Gladys. Thank you. Um, and the first one I did, you might be able to see some sparkle here if I show this in the light. Anyway, I put the mask on and I tried spritzing. I took, I have a little spray bottle or spritzer um, that I've squeezed Wink of Stella coloring medium into and added rubbing alcohol. And that makes a really nice overall shimmery effect. Um, but it didn't work. I mean, there's shimmer all over this, but it didn't work to make a pattern. Um, so, yeah, that's... And the alcohol um, made the fibers of the paper swell up. So, yeah, that's just... It, that didn't work. Actually, the first thing I did was I pulled out my shimmer um, embossing paste, um, which I thought could have been a nice thing to do. And you can see I've got residue from that. On here once that stuff dries on your masks it kind of just stays this is after I scrubbed it even um, with a mesh scrubby and uh, but that's okay they still work um, but my embossing paste that I was not new when I moved to Melbourne almost four years ago um, was totally dried up even though I'd taken precautions to keep it well sealed um, so that was out the window uh, as was my white, plain white shimmery, plain white embossing paste. So um, I went back into my stash and I pulled out, I have this um, frost white shimmer paint that we used to sell. It's a Tsukineko product. Um, and um, it has stayed just fine. It's got a little ball in there to help when you shake it up. Um, and so I used that with this mask last night and I'm hoping you can see this. Um, it created the effect I wanted. Um, and it's okay that I didn't get a whole lot in the middle there because you're going to see we're going to do a die cut there anyway. Um, so I am going to bring in another piece of cardstock and some scrap grid paper and we're going to make a second one today so I can show you how I do it um, when I'm doing things that are more vigorous or involve a lot more um, messing with different colors and layers and what have you I would tape this down but for this I'm just going to leave it like that um, shake that up. I'm going to put some of this paint on clear block here that's mostly on camera. Um, now you could do this, I presume, with a blending brush. 
um, sponge dauber. I have some of the um, wedges that we used to sell already. I have a piece already dedicated to the white shimmer paint, so I'm just going to reuse that. Like I said, this is going to be a, a retired products venture here today in large part. And I'm just daubing it on. I've got a pretty good hold on it over here to keep it from moving. just going over around the edges because again in the middle we're going to cut out. So there we go. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to lift my mask. Yep. And I think you can see that. And I'm just going to set that aside to dry. Oh, I got a little blotchy up there when I first started, but that's okay. It's handmade. I'm going to set that aside to dry and I am going to be right back. I'm just going to get a little water on that. Sorry about that. Just so I'll be able to clean it more easily when I'm finished. Okay, so um, while we are letting that one dry, I'm going to bring back in this one that I had um, actually, I'm going to wait. I'm going to do some fussy cutting. Sorry. I'm bringing in some flowers from Hues of Happiness, and I have one already cut. What I've been doing is, is I'm cutting them, but not necessarily using them, either the ones that die cut or have to be fussy cut. I have little Ziplocs in with my scraps, and I just keep them so I can pull them out for another project down the line. So, yeah. So, chat to me about what you've been up to. Hi, how are you, Mom? You've probably seen on my blog, I've started posting the projects we did at my stamp camp this past weekend. That was a lot of fun. I was very pleased with how it went. Hoping that next time I hold one, I get more participants, but it was nice. It was nice and low key, this first one, because it was people who come to my classes regularly. They're really familiar with me and how I do things and my house and it was just really relaxed and comfortable which is nice um, so I know Gladys saw the post with the um, decorative piece that we made and I posted this morning So I'm just going around, getting a little bit of a margin. I've been doing a bunch with this Hues of Happiness suite. Um, I've got my third class session that's all about it coming up at the end of the month. So that's going to make, what, 24 different cards we've made? this sweet and of course there are many many more that can be done okay that's for one card
this is fussy cutting it's definitely something that the more you do it the faster and easier it becomes because you get used to how your snips work how the paper works I'm glad you like that glass. Yeah, it was fun to make. It's not particularly difficult. You just had to, I had to think through all the measurements and stuff because the one I cased it from didn't have any of that posted. Um, yeah, I'm not even sure what size, well, I'm pretty sure what size she did because mine looks a lot like hers. Um, Yeah, the fun part is you know, sourcing the frame and making sure you have all the right parts and all of that stuff. So it's fun. I really enjoyed working with the Texture Chic Suite. It's not something that I initially... It's out my outside my usual wheelhouse, but it's nice because it's really versatile and very easy to work with in many, many ways. Lots of different elements in the stamp set and dies that layer nicely. You'll see that on a lot of the projects. And I like that the patterns on the papers, I think for the large part, the most part, are... Um, non-directional, which made it really easy to work with on a lot of the projects. Um, oh, you liked all the food I served too, huh? <laughs> that was, in a lot of ways, that was harder than the stamp projects, is narrowing down the choices of what people would like and what would be feasible to do in advance and on the day and I'm happy with how that turned out too. So okay there's two. Get our last one cut up here. Yeah the sweet it Yeah, we'll see. If if you like the um, the projects that I post over the next this week and next week that we did, you might think about about getting that suite because it, like I said, it turned out to be fun to play with. down to the end here. So our daughter is getting ready this week to move into student accommodation. That's private housing that's all for students. It's got little studio apartments. And it's probably about a third the size of the one bedroom apartment she's been in the last several years. So she's having to clear out and clean out and yeah, it's it's interesting. So okay, I am gonna cut a circle out of this here. I'm gonna take this off camera to do. Machine. 
we use only that suite except for one card where we use some of the DSP and um, the elephant parade bundle. So I have used uh, the largest circle from the stylus shapes. And one of the things I like about this is that it's got the, um, the faux stitching, piercing, um, not just around the circle that it cuts out, but also around the outline. And this is the part that we're going to actually use on our card. Um, I'm going to check this and see how dry it is, especially right up in there. Oh, we're good to go. So I'm going to do the same thing on this one. And you can see how that one turned out. These two different, two different patterns. I like them both. find something to do with these circles that I've cut out. And let's see. Um, I'm going to bring in some Hues of Happiness Designer Series paper. And I'm going to cut it down so we just see that through there. This one, I think, is going to be a little, yep, yeah, it's a little on the narrow side, but I think I'm going to go ahead and use it because I'm going to be covering up the bottom edge. So I think it's going to be okay. So let me get these pieces cut down a bit. My little one here. Yep, that's going to be fine. And then this one. doing the very high-tech adhering method of sticky tape because why complicate things there we go Yeah, I am sorry they stopped carrying the shimmer paint, but there's always something next. I like that it's nice and subtle. It pays to clean your cutting pads, I suppose. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to stamp a sentiment on this. And I thought about... So this is from Hues of Happiness, or Happiness Abounds, the stamp set in the Hues of Happiness suite. And this is wishing you all the happiness you can imagine. I'm going to put that on 
this one and bring in my Knight of Navy stamp pad. stamps right away and then this one is from charming sentiments that's a neat new set um, it is a million dollar sale million sales achiever um, Lisa Curcio who does some really neat neat projects and um, she had a say in the design of this stamp set and it's got coordinating dies that look like you fussy cut around the sentiment which is so on trend um, but I am just using it straight on here today and this was wishing you everything wonderful so same same type of sentiment on both cards good for birthdays and just because Cards they don't have to be birthdays. And let's set that aside. And I'm going to mount these onto some Knight of Navy card bases. Bring in my bone folder. You'll see I made a little bit of a bigger border than I often do. So my first layer would normally be 14.4 um, by 10 centimeters, or if you're working in inches, that's what four by four by five and a quarter. Um, but I cut it down one more one more layer just to show a little more of the blue this time. If I'm going to pop those up or just glue them on. I'll pop them up. Why not? glue over on this side.
on there. go and I was thinking some embellishments on there too let's see where'd they go I was thinking some of these Piece of back flower trinkets. I haven't used them yet. I was wondering about. Go. I'm calling it good. There we go. What do you think? I think that's good. Oh, I know. I'm going to bring in one more piece. Well, they each need to get a piece. Um, this one, wishing you everything wonderful. It has a follow-up blurb because you totally deserve it. So let's put that in that one. And I suppose that could go with the other one as well, but That's going to go on this one. There we go. Wishing you everything wonderful because you totally deserve it. And this one is wishing you all the happiness you can imagine. And when I go to send it, I can stamp the coordinating happy birthday. Congratulations, whatever I want. Or just write a little note, which is what I usually do.
you may have noticed over the weeks that I do keep the two most commonly used layers. That first layer, the 14.4 by 10, and then the 13.9 by 9.5 centimeter layers. I try to keep a stash of those pre-cut because I use them all the time. I use at least one of them on almost every card. So it's nice to just have them at hand. So those are my cards today. Thank you for joining me. And I will be back same time, same place next week with another project. In the meantime, if you would like to shop with me or ask me a question or get a catalog, you can reach out to me here. And I will talk to you next week. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.